Gross, and welcome to the Critic Circle. Our special guest critic today is my daughter, Miriam Gross. She has co-written four plays and was the director of my solo show, How I Found an Affordable Apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, when I did it at the United Solo Festival off-Broadway. Miriam, welcome. Thank you. It is good to be here. And today we are going to be reviewing Six, the musical. As Mel Brooks often put it, it's good to be the king. especially if you are the queen of King Henry VIII. In fact, he had six queens. Yes, you might be familiar with the old adage from school, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. And this is the story of the queens. It is one part Broadway musical, one part Spice Girls concert, one part reality show, and yes, one part history lesson. If you're looking for a very traditional theatrical experience, you will not get that with Six. But if you're looking for a good, real fun, you will absolutely find that. It's very much a concert experience, but it's a good one. The wives are in concert, each presents their stories, and we, the audience, are supposed to choose which of the wives had it the hardest at the end of the show. Yes, folks, it's the Real Housewives of Buckingham Palace. Now, being that this is a concert, you see the women dressed in costumes that probably would not have been appropriate during the time of King Henry VIII, and there is a band on stage, and there are laser effects, and all in all, it actually works very nicely, I think. Give the show's authors, Tony Marlowe and Lucy Morse, credit for the sheer nerve, and for more or less pulling this off. The absurdity of the concept, and I mean that in a good way, is also reflected in the direction of Miss Moss and her co-director, Jamie Aritage, and in the choreography of Carrie Ann Ingram. The cast of the Queens is solid. They know how to play off of each other, whether they're being nice or snarky. Uh, the standout for me was Andrea McCasset as Anne Boleyn. I found the music, and especially the lyrics, a bit on the weak side, with the exception of the opening number, which seems to have uh, been a reflection of the Mary Murder System from Chicago. Of course, it would have helped if I could have actually heard the lyrics more clearly. Yes, there were definitely some errors in the sound production. There were times when the microphones cut out. It didn't ruin the show by any means, but it was noticeable and it did happen a few times. It's also worth noting that if you like a more Gen Z style of humor, very like sort of referential wink wink, you might find more enjoyment in the lyrics than you would otherwise. Do we really get to know these women? <clears throat> well, not really. It's an 80-minute show. You have six stories, and there's no intermission. But it will most likely whet your appetite to either Google them or at least look up the Queen's bios in the playbill. While it's a relatively shallow dive into each of these women, they do each get their own distinct voice and sound, and each queen and her song is based on a couple of pop singers of the last two decades for everyone from Britney Spears to Beyonce. Although they mention Anne Boleyn had a daughter with King Henry VIII, they neglect to mention that it was Queen Elizabeth I. This is kind of strange considering that this musical is all about girl power, and Queen Elizabeth I was one of the most powerful girls ever. So, in conclusion, how would you rate Six the Musical? Well, as I said before, it's a concept that ranks on the absurd, but it works. So I would give this three out of five stars. I would give it three and a half out of five playbills. And that is our review of six, and we will see you in the critic circle. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Welcome to the show, to the history.